When we started hunting, we knew one of our goals would be using as many parts of the animal as we safely could. One of the most rewarding skills we've learned is tanning hides into leather, which can be used for all kinds of things. Those mittens are made from deer skin with groundhog fur trim. So in this video, we're gonna show you how we go from deer to leather. Much love to our vegetarian and vegan friends, but this one gets a bit gory, so you may wanna skip it. Once you've successfully hunted your deer, remove your hide carefully so as not to rip it. It's best to hang the deer and use your hands to pull the hide away from the animal, where gravity and leverage will make things much easier. This was a roadkill deer we had to make quick work of, so no such luck. If you do need to use the knife to free the hide at certain points, make your cutting motions parallel to the skin to avoid puncturing it. If you plan to tan your hide immediately, you can move ahead to the fleshing step. Often we're busy attending to the rest of the animal, so we'll roll it up in a garbage bag and stick it in the freezer until we're ready to process it. You can also cover the flesh side of the hide with a heavy layer of non-iodized salt and roll it up to preserve it if you don't have access to freezer space. The first step in processing your hide is fleshing it, where you remove any bits of fat and meat still clinging to the flesh side of the hide. You can purchase fleshing tools online, but any dull piece of metal will do. Jordan is using the non-serrated side of a hori hori gardening tool here. It's nice to have a slanted flat surface like this simple wood frame made from two boards to be able to apply enough pressure to remove the flesh from the skin. You can see as you scrape that the hide underneath is much smoother and lighter. Once all the flesh is removed, we put our hide into an alkaline solution to help remove the hair. There are a few different ways to make your solution from hydrated lime to wood ash, but we used about an eighth of a cup of lye for four gallons of water. So basically what happens here is that the lye water causes the skin to swell up a little bit, and then that makes it easier for the hair follicles to pull out. And look at that, it just, now the hair just comes right out. Before I was like wrenching at that to get any of it to come out. And that way you don't tear the hide when you're taking the hair out. So we'll just file that up. Now that we've got the hide, flesh, and the hair removed, uh, we're gonna pickle it, which is the last step to preserve the hide before we tan it. Um, so we're taking a ratio of one gallon of water to 1.5 cups of salt to one cup of white vinegar. So we've got two gallons of water in here. So I'm just gonna pull this whole thing in, which is about three cups of salt. Just kind of eyeball the vinegar. About one cup. And we're just gonna plop our hide in there and throw in this slab of sheet rock to make sure that it stays under the water. And then we'll let you know when we take it out. All right. So this has now been sitting in the pickling brine for about four or five days. You wanna do at least 72 hours to make sure that it's pickled all the way through. So now we're just gonna let it drip to start drying. And then we'll apply the tanning solution. All right, so we just took our hide after letting it drip dry outside for a little bit. and We lay it on this big piece of cardboard. This is really just so we don't get tanning oil all over the floor. Uh, this is what we're going to coat it in. It's called New Tan. You can buy this online. That's where we got it. So just take a little bit of that. And then just spread it around with your hand to make sure it's getting all over every part of the hide, all the way to the edge. And you're going to do this on both sides. And then fold it up and let it sit overnight. So we oiled the hide on both sides, let it sit on both sides, and then we folded it up into a little ball and let that sit for 24 hours to let the tanning oil work its way into the hide. Now we're gonna unfold it 
and hang it up and start working the hide to stretch it out, make it nice and soft and to dry out the water that was left in there. So these are the two tools that we mostly use to stretch and clean the hide. Uh, we use the hatchet first to scrape the excess flesh and kind of squeeze the water, the residual water out, and that starts the stretching process. And then once it starts to get a little bit dry and soft, then we use this guy to just kind of lean into it and stretch it up and down. So we'll show you that process now. So we'll just kind of start up at the corner there and just work this stuff down. You can kind of use your fist to keep it taut as you go. So put some pressure on it while you scrape. And that'll really help squeeze that liquid out. Once you've done all you can do to soften it on the frame, cut your hide out and use your body weight to soften it even more. Something hard with a rounded corner is ideal, like this washing machine. You can see the darker places on the hide turn light as the pressure causes it to loosen. And now we have a beautiful piece of deer leather ready to be used for things like mittens, gloves, backpacks, you name it. We're really excited to continue learning about different ways of tanning hides and utilizing every part of the animal. Thanks for following along, and if you use this process to tan a hide, we'd love to see what you end up making with it.